So if you followed me on Facebook or Instagram, you know that I did the leader survey. What is a good follower? 101 leaders responded. And today I'm in interview with four of them. These leaders have different backgrounds. And yeah, if you want to see the uh, survey results, check out my blog. Here, this is the interview where we go deeply into the questions. The first question is about social dance. I wanted to know from the um, leaders what they actually like and enjoy in dancing and what does um, a good follower need to have as dance skills. So we're discussing this, musicality in followers and also how this affects um, the dance. So, so much content, stay tuned. So the first question was, I don't know if you remember, but it was, uh, what what does your um, favorite follower bring to the dance floor? So, and it was pretty interesting because um, like the leaders responded, the, like the most important thing was enjoys dancing, mm. smiles while dancing, and brings musicality. So, right. so <laughs> now my question for you would be a little bit, um why is it so important that you dance with a girl that enjoys dancing i think if you look at the the top three things that you just said enjoy dancing smiles while dancing brings me cat musicality i think all these can be summed up in really the is the essence of it is just bring their personality to the dance floor mm -hmm. um i think at the end of the day dancing is about connection and um, it's not about connecting to your mask, but it's connecting to your real, you know, to yourself, to to who you really are with the other person. It's um, genuine, authentic connection. And I think that's why these three things are so important for leaders. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes a big difference also when you have a, a follower who is not afraid of showing herself. You know, she's happy to show and dance and smile and be happy versus someone who just has a mask on with pure technique. Be like a follower should be present in the moment. I think so. I think being present is definitely another way of looking at it. Um, but at, yeah, at the end of the day, it's like, I want to see you. I, I don't want to see your dance school training. I don't want to see your ballerina background. I want to see you, your personality, who you are and what you like doing, um, what you're passionate about. I think, um... A welcome attitude is very important for it goes in both directions um, because you want to um, show appreciation to the other person and um, of course a smile with energy is um, is a key to um, to expressing um, mm -hmm. someone that you appreciate their time and um, their effort that they put in the dance appreciate the music the venue mm -hmm. and um, yeah and the community of course yeah. Yeah, sure. So I think first, I think maybe everyone defines emotion a bit different. Um, maybe some people, you know, really like if a follower is very expressive and that expressiveness matches, you know, the vibe of the song. Maybe it's a super uh, sad song about heartbreak and then the follower is able to, you know, express that. Um, that's one way of looking at it. Um, another one might be what you said, you know, like being able to being able to enjoy, being able to smile. Um, and why is it important to me it's um you have to understand what like what makes a follower a good follower like what enables him to you know be in the flow enjoy the dance and that is confidence if a lead is confident the dance will be great even mm -hmm. if the dancer if even if the leader is you know more on the beginner side if he has confidence the dance will be good okay and why is that important to know? Because as a follower, you contribute to the confidence of the guy. So how you can help me is if I'm dancing with you and you're enjoying what I'm doing, you're smiling, you're giving me feedback, that raises my confidence. What, yeah. what happens, I'm leading better, I'm leading more creative, I'm being able to enjoy the music more. What happens, you enjoy the dance more, right? Um, Wow. And um, maybe does like show your personality has also something to do with this um, bring musicality to the dance floor? Could this be connected? Yeah, I think so. Uh, musicality is a different, um, another area, I guess. But I think how you interpret the music, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what musicality is, right? How you interpret the, the ba 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 or the 
how you interpret those little things um, can reflect also a part of your personality. So yeah, I guess they are connected. First, it's for me, it's understanding the musical structure, for example, um, and, and how does that translate to, to following um, uh, an example? You know, if you, if you understand how, the, how, how, how a song is structured, um, and for example, you know, like if you understand the concept of sections and how the energies are flowing within the sections, um, and if you understand when it's more likely for a break, when it's more likely that a break will happen, um, that helps me as a follower as well, because uh, as a leader as well, you know. Um, so part of following and, and leading is I cannot force my musicality on you, right, as a follower. Um, so maybe it's, maybe it's the case that I, I know a song very well, and maybe you know it a little bit less, right? So I am not going to force that onto you, right? Um, I'm, I'm trying to adapt that because when I understand, okay, she doesn't know the song or maybe she doesn't understand the structure of bachata um, really well or a bit less, then I will adjust my leading. Um, and that is fine. But let's say that we know, we both understand the structures really well of, um, of bachata music and we share a same kind of musicality like a similar sense of musicality, for me, that takes the dance to the next level. Um, so, you know, when you understand, okay, um, I'm about to, you know, like raise the energy a little bit and there's going to be a break and I'm building up my dancing towards that break. If you don't understand that there will be a break coming at some point, that it kind of like the, the whole, it, it doesn't work out what I'm trying to lead. Um, so for me, that is, um, a big part of musicality as a follower is to understand the concept um, of, of music. So if you're dancing bachata, it's understanding the structure of, yeah, the bachata music there that you understand, um, you know, that there's a, what is the difference between a verse and a chorus and that there is like a, a mambo section where you're, you know, supposed to do footwork, um, things like that. Um, so if you know that, it helps me um, as a leader. Yeah. Many girls are also struggling a little bit with um, the saying, um, well, I'm a, I'm a follower, so I cannot put any musicality into the song yeah. because I'm the leader. What is your, um, yeah, what is your thought about that? Yeah, well, I, I, first off, I would say that is not true. I mean, I guess you know that. Um, why is it, why is it not true? Um, a, it of course depends on the lead, right? If the leader is constantly holding you and not giving you any freedom, then yes, I would say you're limited within what you're able to do. Of course, you always have your feet. You can always, you know, do some footwork, but um, it, a big part I would say is if the leader understands the concept of musicality, that's gonna help you. So let's assume that a leader understands the concept of musicality. Um, so what can you do? Um, so yeah, one thing is for example, footwork, right? Um, if you understand like the, the, the rhythms and if you understand in bachata music, for example, where are where the accents are, um, you know, like when the bongo is playing like or like something like that, that's when it makes sense for you to put your footwork, for example. So if you know action where maybe the guy, the, the lead is giving you a loose hold, for example, maybe he, maybe you're in open position, maybe he's even only holding one of your hands, you know, like, then you have a lot of freedom. And that's when you can apply um, your musicality. And I think the first thing that comes to mind is, yeah, footwork. Um, because <laughs> a guy can rarely restrict your feet. He can, if you're in close position and you're leading the sensual stuff, yes. Then there is no way for you to um, do footwork because he's taking away, yeah, your basic step He's blocking you basically. Um, so unless a guy is, holding you in close position doing central moves for the whole duration of the song that's the only reason when you cannot apply uh like yeah um when you cannot work with musicality but uh, if that's not the case there's always um a way yeah yeah so yeah that's a nice point that you're saying footwork um i think also adding to this um shoulders and head movements are something that i always recommend my ladies to to work with and to feel free about it but it's a really really um 
nice um yeah a really good um good summary of what uh, girls can do or why is it not only um musicality that belongs to a a, a dude or like a leader yeah so to interpret the lyrics of the song like um for sure you need to speak most of the time Spanish <laughs> to understand it um <laughs> but to play a bit with it with the lyrics um like there's a song where it comes like shh yeah, everyone knows that from <laughs> Polanco and there to put this for example as a little play you know uh, inside of, 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 of the of the dance for sure it's important always not to interrupt the leading in the main while um, but also maybe to inspire uh, with the musicality the leader in that moment and maybe you're gonna catch up a movement and, and uh, um, take this interpretation of the song which is at the end which is musicality is interpretation of the song and um, to, to catch this movement and to, to adapt it to, to the movement uh, of the combination which he's dancing in the moment. It has different um, uh, aspects, right? It has mm -hmm. different instruments, it has a different dynamic, um, but uh, songs also have a um, um, common structure. And the good musicality for me means if you um, understand um, those kind of uh, different aspects and that you can um, isolate um, the, for example, the instruments, that you understand the dynamic um, um, in response to the part of the song that you are in, mm -hmm. right? If you have an um, instrumental part and um, you're doing waves instead of footwork that uh, would not um, fit in, in, let's say, our, um, our um, perce perceptive logics, mm -hmm. right? And um, therefore, I think huge musicality means just to understand the song and give um, the other or give the leader the, um, the feeling that um, we are talking the same basic language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like referring dancing as a conversation or language yes. as you do. And yeah. um, how could how could a follower um, respond uh, yeah. to a leader in a proper way? Do you have maybe an example or? Um, um, there's uh, always a very thin line because um, the follower um, should also follow, right? And if yeah. um, she's too crazy on musicality, then yeah. um, she probably not uh, be able to follow properly. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I believe that um, the first priority should be um, listening to the music, of course, for, for, for both. Mm -hmm. But then um, maybe uh, right after to first uh, try to follow, right? Mm -hmm. And um, if she can, to dance with uh, body parts that are not very involved in uh, following, for example, uh, using her head expression, um, maybe even uh, sing, or maybe even use hands uh, or fingers to interpret music, but not um, to interrupt uh, with big body parts uh, possible leadings. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm so a follower, I only need to follow, mm -hmm. and I cannot um, do anything about musicality. Mm -hmm. What's your perspective on that? Um, I think there's um, always something um, people can do to express themselves and the important is of course experience um, you will find um, let's call those um, windows okay or spots free spots where you can actually interpret the music mm -hmm. and of course if a uh, um, uh, leader is very possessive but then on the other hand you also don't enjoy to dance with a very possessive leader so mm -hmm. um, let's um, assume that we have normal conditions um, with experience you will understand where are the free spots uh, for you to interpret? Yeah. We, as you guys answered from the first question, that um, show feelings, be happy, um, is so important for you. Oof, um, right. So I guess it, it, it all comes back down to the essence of dancing, of especially social dancing. Um, why do you why do we dance why do we go social dancing um it's it's to connect with other people it's to um let's experiment let's see what happens let's see where this this spontaneity takes us and i guess having no emotions or not following would would go against that it would be it would be a reflection of your lack of connection um and there may be different reasons to why why uh, why the follower is not following, um, but I think 
that's yeah i think that's the reason why it's most disturbing it's because it goes against the very reason why we go out to dance right why it's important as as a as a leader um, it's important uh, in the case of that it's a feedback mm. um, as a leader uh, you kind of under oppression um, to to make things right um, to because you leading that dance so it's the feedback that what you're doing is good and to set in a simple way um, if, if you don't see any emotions no smile nothing then then there's a lack of, of feedback and you don't know is the person enjoying what you're doing um, or or is everyone dancing for themselves and um, there must be kind of a communication also facial wise um, showing emotions so that that um, that there is a connection or that there is a, a, a yeah kind of interaction going on so this i would say is, is, is important um, to, to show emotions that, that's a really good topic you're um you're saying so having a little bit of feedback and mm -hmm. maybe you can also say that dancing is a little bit of a conversation right so if um someone is not giving you any answers to your question it's like a very yeah it's like a very boring um conversation you're gonna have there yeah, yeah. um can you explain the ladies uh maybe what happens if we break the connection because we want to make bigger movements mm -hmm. or we want to show off so what happens from yeah. here well i cannot lead um that's i think the most <laughs> the, the, the biggest impact you're like yeah that's the biggest thing you're doing i cannot lead um and when i cannot lead um yeah i'm very restricted <laughs> in what i can do and uh, i'm not able to express myself to the music i'm not able to create the dance and the conversation that I would like to create. Um, and it creates frustration. I think, you know, if that happens every once in a while, that's totally fine. You know, we all make mistakes and sometimes I'm, you know, I'm trying to prepare the next thing, but the follower was still busy with some styling, you know, that's all right. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that can happen. And, um, but uh, yeah, if it's, if it's constantly, um, then it's just, yeah, the, the truth is I will probably not ask you again for a dance right, because... to recalibrate. Um, that's what I'm doing um, most of the time. Like, if you if you feel that okay, you know, like um, something is not going well, um, I'm taking a big step back on what I'm leading, um, and yeah, I'm going into close position most of the time. I take it very easy, so that works in bachata. Um, I take it very easy, um, and I try to see if if she understands um, if we're on the same level, um, because of course, as a as a as a lead, it's kind of like yeah, I'm partially or like I'm, um, I'm mostly in charge of creating like, you know, like the connection and understanding what her level is. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, yeah, that's what I try. So I try to like, yeah, I, I call it like recalibrating our connection. Mm -hmm. um, and if that doesn't work, um, mm -hmm. then I'm just not leading much in the rest of the dance. I will mostly be in open position. Um, I will mostly practice my own. <laughs> <laughs> my own styling and my basic movement um so at least i you know i can get something out of the dance for myself um mm -hmm. and i you know maybe that's just you know maybe uh, the follower had a bad evening or just a bad moment so yeah depending on how i feel i would ask again for a dance and but if it's not working in the second time then it's just yeah okay. it's uh it can have m multiple reasons but it's probably better to uh yeah li leave it be so connection, not keeping the connection is also one point where you would say, okay, I don't dance with this um, follower again because it's so disturbing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I would say it, it depends on the level of the follow, you know, if it's, if it's a more like beginner, intermediate or improver or something around there, I can understand that maybe the not keeping the connection comes from a lack of, you know, knowledge and, and expertise. Um, so then just saying, I'm not going to dance with you is rude, right? Um, because you can still enjoy it. You know, you just maybe have to adjust your level and it, it can always be fun. But for me, where it's really like um, disturbing is when I can see that it's a, a follow that is advanced. Um, a follow that, you know, has amazing styling and a big repertoire of moves, but she deliberately prioritizes that over us, right? Um, that's for me when it's like, when I make decisions to 
probably never dance with that person again 